Welcome to Capital OTB's Daily Report brought to you by CapitalOTBBet.com. I'm Seth Merrill. This is the Thursday, April 1st edition. And again, if you're not already a member of CapitalOTBBet.com, go to the website CapitalOTB.com. Find out more about signing up today. Always like to start the show with the trivia question. And before we go to the trivia question, we'll get a little stretch run race call and then we'll get into it. On the extreme outside, here is Sid Finch, who has swept to the lead. Sid Finch is in front and draws clear here by a half dozen lengths, maybe more. Sid Finch all by himself inside the eighth pole. He has turned this into a rout. Sid Finch will win here by double-digit lengths. That was Sid Finch winning race two at Belmont last October 8th. And as the trivia question, I want you to tell me how the name Sid Finch relates to today's date. It's that simple. Sid Finch, the racehorse, how does the name of the racehorse relate to today's date? And again, this is the Thursday, April 1st edition of Capital OTB's Daily Report. Let's get to it. The weekend wound up... Uh, a big weekend last weekend. Nice racing uh, Saturday at uh, du uh, first at Maidan in Dubai with the World Cup, but over here with some derby preps over at Turfway and at Gulfstream on Saturday. But Sunday also wrapped up the uh, championship meet at Gulfstream. Thursday afternoon kicks off the spring summer meet. That will run through September 30th. It's going to be highlighted by the July 3rd Summit of Speed. Uh, some of the big names have moved out, the trainers and the jockeys, but uh, Chantel Sutherland returning to uh, the saddle, and she's going to, at least uh, early on, be riding down at Gulfstream in this spring-summer meet. I don't know how long she'll stay there and before she, uh, I would assume, moves back up to Kentucky at some point. But, again, Chantel Sutherland back riding, and she'll be doing it uh, at least at the beginning of this spring-summer meet at Golf stream. The winner meet, again, the championship meet, capped uh, another championship performance from Todd Pletcher, his 17th Golf Stream Park title. He did it with 58 wins. Todd Pletcher, the leading trainer. Irod Ortiz had his third consecutive riding title. He did it with a record 140 wins. So congratulations to Todd Pletcher and Irod Ortiz taking down the titles at the Golf Stream Championship meet. Uh, today, Gulfstream again back in action with that spring-summer meet kicking off, but also we'll have some Aqueduct. Uh, they're kicking off their spring meet as well. They wound up their winter meet uh, this past Sunday also, and uh, Oaklawn will be on our agenda as well. Do want to uh, take a look, and as I was looking at the entries at the various tracks, April 1st, what would be the hunch bet on April 1st? There was a couple maybe that... Uh, came into play at Aqueduct in the second race. Oh, you didn't know. I suppose if somebody pulls the wool over your eyes on April Fool's Day, oh, you didn't know would work as a hunch bet on April 1st. That's the second race at Aqueduct. And Mo gotcha in the third race because there will certainly be a lot of folks trying to get you during the uh, April Fool's Day pranks and whatnot. So a couple of uh, April Fool's Day hunch bets maybe at Aqueduct on this Thursday afternoon. Let me hit you with some of the promos coming up here at Capital OTB. Tomorrow, Friday, there is $1,231 in the Bounty Bet. The Bounty Bet returns. All you have to do to take a shot at that $1,200 plus, play the late pick five at Keeneland with your Capital OTB bet account, and you're in for a shot at all or part of that bounty. That is tomorrow, Friday. Friday, also opening day at Keeneland. There's going to be a track bonus for the 25 highest wagering account holders wagering on Keeneland. Check out the website for more information there. Friday, there's a winner bet contest at the Clubhouse Racebook. If you're in Albany, swing by 711 Central Avenue to take advantage of that. Coming up on Saturday... Also at the Clubhouse Racebook, a double promotion, Naira Pick 4 and a match bet promotion at the Clubhouse Racebook and online, 
CapitalOTB.com will have a $100 online knockout challenge. Again, plenty of bells and whistles, fun, contests, promotions, all available to folks who are playing through CapitalOTBBet.com. And you can find more information on signing up at CapitalOTB.com. All right, let's answer the trivia question now. Sid Finch, a little bit earlier we heard the horse winning race two at Belmont last October 8th. And I asked, how does Sid Finch relate to today's date? Well, if folks uh, don't remember, you can certainly uh, Google the name and come up with Wikipedia and maybe even find the original Sports Illustrated article. But back in 1985, in the April 1st edition of Sports Illustrated, George Plimpton wrote a profile of an up-and-coming, a budding superstar on the baseball scene. He was in the Mets organization, Sid Finch who uh, was a Tibetan monk, could throw a fastball of 160-plus miles an hour, pitched in one shoe, etc., etc. He was too weird to be true, and as it turned out, he wasn't true. With the April 1st date on the uh, cover of Sports Illustrated, one of the editors thought, yeah, let's let's try to pull a prank on our readers. And one of the all-time best April Fool's pranks in the... uh, sports world was the Sid Finch profile. Uh, There was an American Masters, a PBS American Masters done uh, a while back uh, profiling George Plimpton and writer Jonathan D actually uh, explained the the, the Sid Finch situation a little bit there. Here is Jonathan D with that explanation. I guess I'd been working there for about six months when George got the assignment from Sports Illustrated to uh, write the the Sid Finch piece. he had the idea, I mean, there are differing versions of this story too, but as I remember it, George had the idea to write an April Fool's piece for Sports Illustrated, and he'd gotten the idea in a typical George way, which is that there had been an April Fool's piece in the sports section of a paper in London um, that involved a Japanese marathoner, a first-time marathoner, who was under the mistaken impression that the race not lasted not 26 miles, but 26 days. And therefore, he was still out there running through the countryside somewhere, and people were out searching for him. George fell for the story completely. It, 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 you know, it, it hooked him. He was fooled, and he loved being fooled in that way. And he decided that he wanted to do something similar. So he came up with uh, the idea of, um, of of Sid Finch, uh, Sid being short for Siddhartha, the uh, the Harvard dropout uh, Buddhist monk in training who uh, through a kind of accidental through the through the study of the union of of mind and body had stumbled upon a method by which he could throw a baseball. I think it was 163 miles an hour. So again, Sid Finch, the horse we heard breaking his maiden uh, last October at Belmont, named uh, in honor of Sid Finch, the fictitious baseball prospect that was written about on April Fool's Day, 1985, by George Plimpton. The answer to today's trivia question. All right, that wraps up this edition of Capital OTV's Daily Report. Brought to you by CapitalOTBBet.com. I'm Seth Merrill. That got you up to date for Thursday, April 1st. As always, enjoy the afternoon. Make some money. We'll see you again tomorrow for the Daily Report. Good luck.